Radio Bypass. Bringing you rock and roll music that deserves to be heard. Discover new bands. Hear some old favorites on Radio Bypass. Hey, Rockers, we are back with another chat and another band to introduce you to. Hopefully you've caught uh, this band's music on our music shows. Uh, we've played several songs over the last several months. Um, but uh, we want to get to know this band better. And we are talking with Holly and Fred from the Dead Groove Band. How you doing, guys? Good. How are you? Very good. Glad we were able to connect with you. Love the album. Love the songs that you've put out. You. Um, and, and was excited about the opportunity to talk with you guys. Awesome. Glad to hear that you love it. Uh, I do. You don't get taste based on your t-shirt. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't ever go wrong with Led Zeppelin. Um, Not at all. So tell us about the band. I know you guys just started, I guess three of you, your three piece, just got together just about three years ago or so, three, four years ago. Yeah. Um, and then started woodshedding, it sounds like, and which eventually led to this album that came out in 2023. But tell us about the band. How'd you come together and, and, and how'd you make the record? Tell us about that. Yeah, thanks. Um, we, it was a pandemic project. I know eventually people stop talking about that, but right. you know what we we are we were all on pause for the time being, you know. So right. uh, Fred and I we moved we had just moved to Long Beach, California, and we're kind of bored, <laughs> but also we're doing a lot of things, and uh, always had in the back of our mind, you know, a project, a, a band, and so uh, Fred and Caesar, Caesar's our guitar player. They were in a band in Peru uh, a while back called Mauser, and a well-known rock band down there. And they got to work together for several years before he before Fred moved up here. So uh, Fred and Caesar were talking about you know how you know they want they both wanted to start something more rock and roll, and mm -hmm. I'm 100 percent rock and roll to my bones, so I'm ready for rock and roll. So uh, I had a song, uh, Maverick, that's on the record. Uh, it's kind of an acoustic blues tune, and uh, Caesar had a couple of ideas too, and we just started working at, on them um, over the internet. And uh, eventually Fred and I took a trip down to Lima, uh, Peru, and, and recorded Book of the Dead and, and Maverick. And so we, we started it there and just tried to kind of shop it and see what happened and um, ended up getting funds to go and record the full record. So nice. we went back and recorded eight songs. So that was our debut record that came out uh, March 30th of this year. Mm -hmm. And we've been um, just kind of putting a few, you know, singles out there and seeing how it's been received. And so far it's been really well received. Yeah, I, I think so, too. The most recent was Book of the Dead, if I remember the order correctly. And um, I know that, that you know, we don't get a ton of feedback when you do a music-based podcast. It's not like the old days when it was on the radio. People would call you all the time and say, oh, man, who was that band? But I do get feedback occasionally and, and via email or sometimes even somebody looks up our phone number on our website and calls. Um, and I did get a, a few good comments about that awesome. soon. Um and it's, it's so cool to me, that song, too, because uh, it, it's, I mean, b besides the fact that it's powerful and you just have an incredibly powerful singing voice, too. But mm -hmm. but it's just a cool mixture, because for me, that song, it sounds like a, a if, if the band Trouble, if you, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that band. I've heard that before, I think, yeah. Yeah, they're kind of a doom metal band from my hometown, Chicago. Um, but when I <laughs> heard the song... I was like, boy, it sounds a little like Trouble mixed with some Black Sabbath, mixed with some Deep Purple, and maybe just ever so slightly a hint of Led Zeppelin, but yes. but primarily Sabbath, Trouble, and Deep Purple. And I was like, man, this is a really cool combination of sounds that you guys put together. It's a smoking song. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. That's a, you. a good compliment because you don't want to be – the same as everybody else you want to be able to pioneer maverick your way into you know your own sound and so right nice that you can't really pinpoint it but you can definitely put some some good players in there to to fill in of what like our sound really is before people actually 
experience it, you know. And and Book of the Dead is the second <clears throat> song that we wrote together. Mm -hmm. The first one was Maverick, and this was our second one. Like we wanted to have a banger, which mm -hmm. it, it turned out really good. And those mm -hmm. were that was our intention: Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, and the modern thing would be Holly with her. Texas style and blues and bringing all the blues rock and roll. Yeah. Right. Well, you, you definitely achieved your goal then because that's definitely what it sounds like. So that's, awesome. that's really cool. Yeah. I love it. And, and, and I did want to ask you guys about the album overall, because I read a little descriptor of the record, right. And, and looking at all the song titles too. And it's, did, were, you, were you kind of doing it almost like a concept record? I mean, are, are, is everything supposed to kind of connect? Well, the the songs weren't a concept record, uh, you know, theme. But when we did the um, the 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 order of the songs, um, Fred did that in a certain a certain way. That was a concept. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like for and example, it goes with the artwork too. It goes with mm -hmm. the artwork and also goes with the next song. It's like at, by the end of the that first song, it's already telling you giving you some some Clue. some clues of the next song for example mm -hmm. going from maverick into uh 69 stingray there's something that connected so i would say yeah this is a concept album yeah I, I thought so because i'm reading this i'm like okay these 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 three people are way smarter than i am because i <laughs> read the description about we see a fourth density plant i have it here because i can't memorize this we have a fourth density planet with our with its own consciousness, you know, etc. Yeah, we got uh, yeah. We finally got the vinyl out also. Oh, that looks the that looks nice. Of the, of the of the art. Yeah, um, yeah, that's the uh, the front of the. That was the actually and... that was actually our backdrop for the first show, and then Holly was like, you know what? Let's make that the album the cover. album cover. And then we were like, really all well. right, so we it's went gold. with it. So, oh, that's a great choice. Yeah. Who, who came up with that artwork? Um, so Fred uh, actually <laughs> works for Cleopatra Records um, as a graphic designer. He's been a graphic designer for a long time. Uh, he designs all of our uh, our um, merchandise. Uh, we have a clothing company, which is actually how this band started. We That's started, the main reason how we started I started that as a clothing company because we were bored during the pandemic, and um, <laughs> I wanted to help him get his artwork out on T-shirts and stuff and. So I'm good with websites, so I built a website around his artwork, and then we both started <clears throat> designing and putting stuff out there. And then when it came to to naming the band, we ended, we ended up just saying, well, let's just build an enterprise. You know, okay, this is Dead Groove Clothing, and this is Dead Groove Band, and next we'll have, we have Dead Groove Coffee now. <laughs> I saw that on your website. I saw yeah, that on your website. Coffee. From Peru, actually. It's from the Andes. David Ellison involved in that. You know, he's the coffee king of oh, rock and roll. No, um, he's also super into coffee, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but not at all. Um, so the, when we were recording our, our full record, this uh, company called Rock Cafe, uh, knew that we were there and came and gave us um, three samples of their coffee and then when we went back um, we ended up doing a um, just a buyout of a, a, like I think we had 15 bags or something with our own concept on them but um, we didn't even think that we would sell a lot when we were in Peru because it's people in Peru, you know, they have really ac great access to coffee at their local Yeah, and, and, and who's going to pay like $20 <laughs> for coffee? Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. <laughs> right, and right. we almost sold out there. We only had like six bags or something to yeah, bring back they here. Loved it. They loved it. <laughs> so, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're not going to keep that up. It's just, it's a limited, limited quantity. But, you know, the, whatever. The, the coffee, you're not going to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. It's really good coffee, though. I'm sure next time we go, we'll probably. And now I want to taste it. <laughs> right? this, this this coffee is called the Peruvian Devil, and yeah. it goes with the song mm -hmm. that we have in this record called the Devil. The, the, the Devil, and you yeah. have like a QR code in the back, takes you to the song. You yeah. know, it's pretty cool. Man, I love this. this is, I'm fascinated by this. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I learned this from Kiss. You know, put your name on everything. Right. Right. And, and, and just like your vinyl, you know, I, I just talked with uh, Jack Blades from Night Ranger the other day, and, nice. and we were kidding about uh, their new live album that it's like in a bunch of different color vinyls, you know. 
And we were, we were kidding about that. You know, he was doing his Gene Simmons impersonation. You know, he should own them in every color. You know, you need them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. And you guys, uh, so Fred, so you're from Peru originally then? Yes, I'm originally from Peru. Gotcha. In the jungle, yeah. Gotcha. And you guys just recently, I believe, because I... Um, just within the last few weeks, right? You just played some shows back yeah. at, back at, back home for you in yes. Portland. Yeah. Went back home. We played uh, our show, releasing the record in mm -hmm. Peru. Uh, we had bands playing before us, and it was great. It was it, it was a really good turnout. It was awesome. A lot of new fans. Uh, mm -hmm. People, you know, people in Peru they are not used to buy merch. Usually, they go to the show, they go home right after, but. You know, we're bringing the culture from here, the touring culture in the U.S. That after you play a show, you go to your merch table, table and say hi to everybody, and, and so so it kind of it kind of worked out really well. It was a great show, and then we had a little extra time to record new songs. We record two new songs, mm. and, Excellent. and, and we cover. also recorded yeah. a cover. So so this is not gonna be out soon. This is just like, you know, getting the seat to get signed, to get, get it signed with a new label and get the next record out, hopefully, by mid, middle next year. Of 24. 24, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just make sure now that we're at the end of the year as we're, as we're sitting here talking, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure we're talking 24 yeah. and not 25. Yeah. 2024. That's awesome. I can't wait to hear more. Oh, yes. um, the, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm blown away by all this. So um, this kind of music that you guys play is that a, is that a big thing in Peru? This kind of music? Um, it's not a really big thing uh, right now in, in Peru. You can it's like a, a lot of punk for sure, really popular as as everywhere, mm -hmm. and then a lot of indie music like uh, like indie pop. Uh, that's what is hitting right now. So it's not really. The best place for our music but uh, a bunch of people is really like impressed of this new band that we are proposing to them you know so yeah. they all love that they all love mm -hmm. the songs so that's a great time that's great and then what about here in the u.s you guys you know now because you're one your guitar player is still in peru you know, full time sounds like and sounds like you're kind of back and forth maybe a little bit so do you have any plans of doing uh us based shows throughout 2024 um well we'll see it's possible that we might just focus on the record in 2024 and um uh you know we're we're looking at, of course at it being out early enough to try and tour um but it's all about getting caesar here because he's um it's, it's very hard to get people here from uh peru to work uh but we the visas the visas are hard to come by or yeah i mean he yeah. he has to be a musician visa so yeah. so you know we we gotta build the schedule <clears throat> of 2024 so we can start the process and you know have the the actual reason for him to be here yeah so we just finished playing a whole tour which is promoting our record mm -hmm. self-titled and uh, we went to East Coast, we mm -hmm. did New Jersey, New York, we played Utah, Phoenix. Uh, we, we did a really good run for, yeah, for, yeah. for this year. It wasn't with Caesar. We had a, a sub helping us out uh, through the year. And then uh, hopefully next year is going to be with Caesar, with new music also, and also playing these songs. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, yeah, I hope so. And then, um, how are you? Uh, you still have, I know, uh, I know I read that you had been in a Zeppelin related band. Is that something that you still do as well? In addition to dead groove? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when we were doing the tour for dead groove uh, and Fred's in a bunch of bands too, we had to kind of see where the holes were in our schedule <laughs> to figure out where we could go and how far we could go. But yeah, I, I regularly tour with Zepparella. Um, we gig, uh, half the year i mean we're out almost every other weekend um and uh it's usually two or three shows at a time so we're all over the place uh in february we're going to alaska so that'll be the first time i've played oh, wow 
Africa. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, it's a very well received band. Um, they've been around for 20 years. Is it all Zeppelin? All Zeppelin. Yeah. It's all, all Zeppelin. female Zeppelin tribute band. Um, with uh, there's four of us and um, uh, yeah, we, we just play everywhere. We've, we've uh, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a really cool band. Mm -hmm. I actually saw them play before I even started playing bass. <laughs> and I was blown away. They were really are, awesome. Are you singing in that band too, or are you just a bassist in that one? Just playing bass. Gotcha. Gotcha. Because yeah, the way I hear it, the, you know, I'd have, to, I'd have to see it with the Zeppelin thing if you were the singer, because yeah. the way you sing in Dead Groove doesn't quite, I don't hear Robert Plant coming no, out no, no, no. in that and this record. I'm not planty. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. And Fred, you're doing uh, Kings of Thrash too, right? In addition to this, this is one of yeah. your projects. Uh, I I've been playing some shows with them. Uh, hopefully, uh, 2024, we're gonna start booking stuff. We have some Mediterranean tour uh, with the cruise, play, play playing on a cruise for first time. Um, Fun. So that's that's gonna be good. And yeah, we we just been doing this mega tribute with with Ellison and Jeff Young and also Chris Poland. Right. And, and yeah, it's, it's been fun. It's been fun. And also playing with, with the Bullet Boys. It's like oh, a wow. rock band from the 80s. Sure. Yeah. Smooth up in yeah. That's totally. Right. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been working all year. Like, same as Separella, Hollywood Separella. I'm like busy all the time. Yeah. I'm also touring with Bullet Boys. We are with the same booking as Dokken and Little Ford and all these 80s bands. So right. We're always working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like it. Wow, we I had no idea you guys were that busy. You know, live at the airport pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Get to visit your home every once in a blue moon. It's seriously, it's seriously. Yeah. Sometimes it's like not even twenty four hour turnaround before one of us is back out the door. Yeah, but it's fine. <laughs> I guess that's a good problem to have. I guess you know. I'm sure it gets tiring sometimes, though. It can be. It can yeah, be. touring is definitely a job. You know, you be. Time. People do it with love and they enjoy everything, but mm -hmm. there's a point where it just turns a job and it's like, oh, okay, I gotta go out of town, I gotta pack. And, right. you know. <laughs> what does what does so many musicians say over the years? You know, they love they love touring for an hour and a half when they're on stage, <laughs> and the it's the rest of the hours that are the problem. That, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Sound check sucks. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like, but not having one can suck too, right? Exactly. So. Exactly. I'm just saying, like at four o'clock, you're standing there going, "Oh my god." I think what <laughs> what it sucked the most of touring is lobby calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lobby you know, calls. like eight a.m. lobby call. Uh, or, yeah, I was gonna say I was gonna say six a.m. But yeah, eight. Or, or when right. you fly, it's usually four forty-five. Four, yeah, 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 totally. yeah. Yeah, you can't even go to bed. Uh, there's <laughs> been a few times I've just stayed up. I'm like, well, I could sleep on the plane. <laughs> yeah, if you can. So yeah, like I can. Sometimes, I can. no matter how exhausted I've been, I have a hard time sleeping on the plane. Come on, I think I'm self-conscious that I'm gonna lean over on the person sitting next to me or oh, something or, or drool or something while i'm sleeping i don't want to do that in public <laughs> sometimes no matter how tired i am i'm like oh man i can't sleep i'm a zombie but i can't sleep mm -hmm. that's funny yeah no that is that is grueling but but clearly obviously you guys love making music otherwise you wouldn't do that so and i have a lot of respect for that and i love when bands create new music that's why i love this dead groove so much um because like i said uh, everything about what you guys are doing yes i definitely hear other bands mixed in there but i get excited because sometimes especially like younger musicians a lot of times they're really good at like uh with technical proficiency you know they can play you know the eddie van halen licks exact or they can sing Paul Rogers exact or whatever it might be, but their own personality doesn't come through. So they're just, you know, ex exact carbon copies of what they're emulating or what they the them. Well, or, I think or that's, so. the, that's the power of what the gift is. You know, if you've got the gift, you've got the gift. If you don't, you don't. <laughs> yeah. But that's what I love about this because I can hear other stuff, but I hear you guys, your personalities come through. 
house in, in this in this music. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, I think uh, the the reason actually this band came about is meeting Holly right before the pandemic. I met her like it was my last show. I already had a, like a Saturday canceled. It was a Friday. Uh, the guitar player got actually sick with COVID when COVID was like a new thing. And the we were two like, week shutdown point. And we were like, right. you know what? Let's go play the show anyways. Let's go, let's go. And that's how I met Holly. She, <laughs> she was there in San Diego. And then we started getting together just to jam. So we would get together and play the songs that she knows that are all the Zeppelin songs. And I was pretty new with Zeppelin. I knew all the hits that I also played back in the day, rock and roll gigging. Mm -hmm. And But we started getting into her music. She started getting into my music, which is like, I, I wanted to play Zappa. I remember playing some <laughs> Zappa songs, which, which she's not familiar with fives and sevens. So right. that's how it came all about. We started jamming and we had this, you know, during the pandemic, we had this show that we would go live on Facebook and Instagram, just jamming drum and bass. The Fred and Holly show. It it's was the Fred there. and Holly show, yeah. And we were just jamming. And what's, what's really cool about that show, you can tell that he didn't count it. Or I don't know, do you count in? No, it was just, you like, just no. You just start and I just start and it just becomes this really cool thing. And it's it was really magical. So you guys just had an instant chemistry, it sounds like, where you're able to lock in because, you know, that sometimes rhythm sections can't lock in right away. Like what yeah. you're timing. And, and, and then I, I always try to just to like, like uh, learn from each other and get, get, get better right away because we would jam and I would be like, okay, we're jamming the same thing. Let's do yeah. something else. And then we just try to get creative. It's, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to yeah. be creative and be original just naturally yeah. so it's a whole sure. thing that you gotta master so then i i remember she had maverick and then we uh started creating the, the whole jam section because maverick was a blue song just one rhythm yeah, blues over and, over. And, and all the verses without it, it didn't have the the chorus that was definitely a caesar addition to the song but the whole jam thing we built it up together pretty much from the from that show and then I was already, I mean, I, I, I've been gigging a lot in Peru and I moved here in 2017 mm -hmm. and I'm already going at it here and it's good. But I got to the point where I'm like just tired of playing somebody else's trip, right? Right, I'm right. I'm supporting, helping these people. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yeah, let's do it. And then at the end, it's all for them. You know what I mean? Right. So I was like, I really want to come up with something and then that's how just everything worked out and then we ended up doing this band and and it's like raw ideas raw good selection of ideas that we put together and then and then the new songs are even way are way better already yeah so like in a year just playing together we just yeah. have grown a lot it's yeah great. yeah that's when you're fantastic kind of like working on something you just really grow at, at, at a very fast rate and i think us jamming together we know what we want out of these songs you know we know what it's expected and you know push it and you know caesar works for the voice peru so and, and all these other big uh, uh television productions down there with these top notch singers and stuff and like it's he pushes me really a lot when we're down there you know and um this last session it was actually a lot easier than the first two because you know, we've all kind of grown and and and, and realized what we're going for. Just know? by working, we're just getting better, keep getting better because we're not stopping, you know? Sure. Well, yeah, and just sp spending time together, you know, you learn the strengths and weaknesses you each have, you know, so you know where to focus. I mean, yeah, being together makes a makes, you know, huge difference than just showing up and like, okay, I know how to play these songs, but I have no chemistry with the people I'm playing with or whatever, you know. So yeah, it makes sense. Well, that's great. I'm I'm really excited. So um at the end of this, I do want to play the Book of the Dead, uh, which I mentioned earlier. What else? I, I haven't played on, on this show, I can tell you, I haven't played Bad Friend. I know that. Um not sure if I've played Play Your Hand either. I mean, I haven't played that one either. So um, beside the Book of the Dead, just because I think it's such a smoking track, I have to add that to the end of this. What what other songs should we play from this album? 
I think the one <coughs> you should definitely play is uh, 69 Steel Ray. It's the song number two on the record. Okay. And it's also a banger. It's really good, featuring mm. Holly's great okay. vocals. And then mm. the souls are great too, and it has a vibe definitely more happy. Uh, I, I definitely thought a lot of Dave Grohl when I was <laughs> putting this this drum. It was like a Ian Pacey from from Deep Purple and Dave Grohl playing together. <laughs> you know, so okay. yeah, it's a pretty cool song, and we are definitely gonna be pushing that one with Jody next because it's like off the record on our streaming platforms like Spotify. This song is on the number one right now, like. Really? Even though Silent Night King is the first song of the record, you know, people go one, two, and then they stop listening. You know what I mean? That's why I left all the good stuff. So oh, surprised because Book of the Dead is so smoking. I can't believe they wouldn't get down to totally. that. Totally. And Book of the Dead is like number eight on the on the record, right? So we left really good stuff by the very end, like in yeah. Into Infinity, yeah. Ghost. That all those bangers are connected. So I think 69 steering would be a really good one for, for your public. Okay, then that's what we're doing. Yes. Right, thank you. Anything else we should know before uh, we wrap things up? Anything else you want people to know about the, that? Uh, uh, about the Book of the Dead, uh, you know, the lyrics is based mm -hmm. on the Egyptian Book of the Dead. It's pretty much a way of mocking how, they, how important it was for the Egyptians to before they died, they needed to have their Book of the Dead done. And the Book of the Dead used to be like, uh, so expensive. It used to be like three years of salary, three yeah. years of work, so you can have your Book of the Dead set like up. the whole family had to work. To yeah, yeah, it was like, you it was know. Like, yeah, slave labor for these secrets to get into the afterlife. To the afterlife, which nobody knows. And it's a yeah. pretty interesting story. You guys are teaching me things. I don't know any <laughs> of you. <laughs> So I just thought the whole story was kind of bullshit. You know, if there's an afterlife, I think we all deserve, after being here, I think we all deserve to go. <laughs> totally. So, so there's, there's a yeah. lot of wondering in this record, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I, it's, I, I'm just amazed. Okay. <laughs> well, that's good. All right. Well, hopefully we'll hear your next record in 2024, obviously. And hopefully you guys will get some live dates in the U.S. too, because I'd like to get a chance to see you guys yeah. play live. Hey. Where are you at? Uh, in Northern California, Sacramento. Oh, okay. Well, I'm I'm usually our, up there. Actually, our last show in the U.S. was in Petaluma, right? Petaluma, yeah. yeah, yeah. Op opening for Zeparella. That yeah, was yeah, a good yeah. One. yeah. Uh, is from the Bay Area, so I'm up there all the time. So please come to a show. Let me I'll know. come. I'll come see you at one of those then. Even though I don't usually do the cover band thing, but you know, for you, I'll do it. Yes, <laughs> you love it. They are great. They are really great players. I won't spoil it for you, but good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do love Zeppelin, but um, no, that's great. And then your guys' website, deadgrooveband.com. So I'm sure if you do have any news, you'll, you'll put it there. And then all the links to all your social media is on that website uh, as well. Socials is all Dead Groove Band. Perfect. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much. Um, and you guys get to know Gret Dead Groove Band some more now. Thanks to Fred and Holly for coming by Radio Bypass. And then we're going to crank up right now. We're going to go with Fred's pick first. So, uh, again, thank you, guys. And here comes 69 Stingray from Dead Groove Band. Check it out. Mm -hmm. 